Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Brad Knowles, Permanent Fish Finder. We're live on Friday Night Flies from the Den. It just happens to be my new man cave. i just checking to make sure we got audio. Look at that. That's me. In front of you. In front of the millions. Anyhow, so if you haven't used chronomids for fly fishing, I highly recommend you do it. There's lots of people out there that are pioneers in the game. One of them's Brian Chan. He's got lots going on down there. Another guy that I've recently started hanging out with and uh, talking about still water tactics has been fly guys. Uh, Brandon Dixon over in uh, Camus Interior of British Columbia. He also sells Ford pickup trucks, hence my brand new Ford pickup. It's sweet. I like a lot. Anyhow, that being said, there's lots to be learned no matter what game you're playing, but fly fishing one. If you ain't learning, you ain't playing. And that being said, today's show is brought to you by Soul Res. Blackout or bone dry clear ultra thin makes your chronomids look sexy. And we got a new sponsor on the show. Good friends of Tasty Tackle. Look at all them damn beads are beautiful. Them beads are beautiful. Anyhow. Tasty tackle, good stuff. Let's go over to the website quick. So if you're sitting at home. Because the damn COVID-19's got you down. Well, hey, you don't have to worry about going down. You can just order your beads right online now. Look at all them beauties. Today, we're going to be using this one right here in a 764. And you can order it pretty easy online. Add it to your cart. And it'll be delivered to your house or to your mailbox. That being said, let's go back up top. We're talking about chronic fishing. And this week... We've got a brand new competition, a new contest for you ladies and gentlemen out there. And the winner is going to take home one of these fancy bottles of Solarez UV Cure to make them chronomids look dead sexy. So either in the black, if you don't have black yet and you've got lots of the cure, clear, black, black, and the clear, or, and... You know what we're going to do is we're going to give away one of these Tasty Tackle baits. So you're going to get a brand new bottle of Solar Red Bone Dry, either the clear or the black, and some beads to tie with them. So today I'm sharing the Chromie. And like I said in the uh, description, it's really hard to get these really shiny chronomids to come out the way they're supposed to. Hopefully it comes out good enough that you can see what we're trying to attempt here. And in my description I said, if you have not got a chromie in your fly box, you're dumb. You're dumb! Exclamation mark, dumb. And why is that? Because this is probably one of the most popular chronomids on the planet. It is so much so that I use it as... My staple, damn near, every time I go fishing, chronomids, and it gets slow, what do you do? You put on the damn chrom uh, chromie. Anyhow, so, that little secret. I also said that this is probably one of the most go-to patterns in the permanent area. It is for me, anyhow. And I know it is for a couple of my guides. So we're going to tie it. Let's tie it. We'll tie it for you folks at home. So... Tonight, like we said, we're using Tasty Tackle Bead. 
I'm going to tie it on either a size 12 or a 14. So we've got Daiichi 1760s in a size 12, 1760 Daiichi in a size 14. Mm -mm, let's do it a 14 today. I've tied lots in the 12s. I'll even tie these in 10s because the fish are monstrous in Pemberton. So much so that sometimes I'll even tie them in a size 4. Kidding. No, I never go that big. But I should, just just because. Hopefully, all are staying safe, away from the damn COVID nineteen that uh, stricken the country. And it doesn't really matter what color you put underneath these chromies because you're going to cover it all up anyhow. So, what I usually do is I'll throw something something light in color. Um, as you can see, this is one that I use a lot. And it's uh, just ultra thread in a 70, something super light. You don't want to bulk stuff up. So I'm going to swap over, throw some of that light stuff on, thread my bobbin, and get right to tying this beautiful pattern. So took my boy. Still had fishing yesterday. They fell in the river. Thank God I wasn't too far from them. I think we all we all do it once in a while, and it wasn't bad or anything because you know I just I was right beside him, and, and what happens is you just pick him up. I mean, he was a little upset because he's six years old, and this is like one of the first times I took him to the river to go chase some big fish, and it wasn't even ten minutes being there. Guess what? He falls in the damn river. It's funny because I'm standing there beside him. Okay, so what, what we got here before? I'm using the uni stretch. And I mean it, it makes really good lungs and gills or lungs. So we're just gonna pinch it on there. So anyhow, I get them all set up down on the river, and he's I got a nice little flat spot. It's nice and safe, nothing too crazy. But, you know, the problem is, is that he sees me standing on a rock beside him. Hey, man, that's looking pretty damn cool. That's looking pretty cool standing on that rock. But Dad didn't put him on a rock for one reason. Because he's six years old, and uh, we didn't want to see him go for a swim. So I noticed that he, uh, he was standing pretty good there for a little bit. And you know how boys are. you got to kind of let them spread their wings. The next thing I know, he's standing on a rock and he's feeling pretty cool. It's like his dad standing there on a the rock fishing on a river. And then I turn away and I hear Kasploosh. Yeah, and poor little Jack went in up to his belly button in the river. And I had to reach down there and pull him out, looking like a soaked cat. Anyhow, he didn't get hurt other than his pride and pulled his pants off and dried them off and uh, it's a good thing that mom packed some her his uh his mud buddy oh, we got somebody trying their best to get a hold of me sorry about that guys and uh, so what we did we stripped him down put uh, put his wet underwear inside his mud buddy and we continued the fishing I kept him out till damn near 10 o'clock at night he fell asleep on the way home. It was pretty nice, but I gotta hand it to him. He passed the test, and uh, I think that's what happens. You know, you get them out there and get your kids fishing. They learn real quick that you gotta listen to your dad, and if you don't, oh, you know what I didn't do because I've been talking too much. Is I didn't bury some wire. So, what we're gonna do is lay this wire back up on top here. So yeah, he learned real quick that you listen to dad when it comes to fishing tips. Or you end up looking like a silly boy with wet pants down on the river. So we're trying to throw me here. And I'm telling some stories of my boy getting wet on the river. Going steelhead fishing with his dad. Okay, so we got red 
red pencil, and that one here is a soft wire, and that is the medium red. And what we're going to use for the, the wrap is going to be the holographic pencil in a 116. Seems to be pretty, pretty even spread. Looks good. I would have liked to have put that rib in a little bit higher, but that just happens when you start talking a little bit too much and forget what you're doing. So, see how I cut a little bit of a taper? If you can see that. Taper's pretty straightforward. What I like to do is put it right in back here. Don't get too far ahead of yourself. And don't get too far into that taper. Just like so. And then nice and evenly wrap that guy back down as well as you can. And because I've got, I didn't put it all the way up. I'm just going to have to build this up just a little bit. The thing with chromies is you want to keep them as thin as you can. They are not a real thick chronomid. So, that being said, you do still want to have a little bit of a taper up to the head. And that's going to look pretty good because we're going to put, put some peacock curl up at the head. Okay, let's get busy here. Up on the bottom cradle. Let's get busy here. Wrapping the good stuff. Ooh, that stuff is so shiny. I should have worn my sunglasses. The reflection is nuking me here. Okay, so you don't need to build it up too thick on the head. Like I said, just because once you start throwing the peacock curl in there, and everything else start to bulk up pretty quick. Okay, that's that. Get this guy cut off. Okay, we don't want to throw that flashy stuff away because it's uh, you can use it, and use it, and use it over and over again. Don't bulk it up too much. Just a couple quick whip finishes back on the bobbin cradle. Let's get busy with the wire, red wire going up. Same thing, you want to keep it to about six. It is really hard to see that with the light, but we have a light that's hitting that thing right now. It's blinding. Okay, so right up to the head, same thing. Bobbin, pop the bobbin cradle. And all we're gonna do, actually I'm gonna take one wrap off. And I'm just gonna walk this guy down. God, the light is just hitting that thing perfect. I can barely see it. I'm getting old man eyes here, I think. Okay, so you want to make sure that that's down nice. How's it looking on your end? Looking like a chromey, isn't it? A little bit of a funny hump here because I didn't tie in the, up at the head. But you guys get the gist of it. Hopefully it was worth that little story I had to tell about my boy falling in the river. So there you go. So what I like to do at this point is I'm going to cut the lungs back just like so. I'm going to get the bone dry. Did I tuck that off? Put it back on the bottom cradle. We're going to get the bone dry. Give it just a quick cover of the bone dry just for the simple reason that you don't want to do it once the once the peacock curl is on there just for because the peacock curl gets all hard and nasty like and you don't want the hard and nasty like okay so that's armored and it's shiny you don't have to worry about that bad boy going anywhere we're gonna hit it with the light Tear it up. Done. Just like that. Now, what you got to do is have yourself a nice little chunk of peacock curl. Just like that. Rough it up a little bit. And all we're going to do is tie it in just behind the bead. And we're going to make it sexy. Sexy time. Okay, so sexy time coming up. 
I'm sure everybody's got their way of doing chromies. You don't want to bulk the head up too much. You just want to give it that just a little bit of love. A little bit of love. And then same thing. Right in tight to the bead. Give it another wrap around that guy. And then what we're going to do is tilt this up. You don't want to cut that beautiful peacock curl now that you got it all tied in there. And then you want to get that whip finishing tool and get your knot right in tight behind that bead. You don't need a whole lot of it in there. Two or three whip finish. Pull it in nice and tight. Once again, up the natter. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's my rendition of the Chromie. And I'm going to go catch a beautiful big trout on that tomorrow. So we'll give that a slow roll. That's Big Bad Brad's Chromie. And you probably could have used a little bit smaller peacock curl, but it don't really make that much difference. If they're in that close looking at it, it's going to be in there, yeah. And if it's in there, yeah, you're going to be hooting and hollering and throwing some high fives. Loving life. So, anyhow, what we're going to do is this week's contest is going to be the chronomid. Tie your favorite chronomid. Share your material list for a chance to win one of those or one of these in black. Ultra thin, bone dry, along with our good friends over at Tasty Tackle. We're going to throw in a bag of beads. Actually, we'll throw in a couple, so you just tell me which one you want. I've got six or seven here. Tell me what color you're looking for. We'll throw it in the envelope. We'll ship it off to you. Anyhow, we're going to say congrats one more time to Rod Dayton. That was a beautiful dragonfly. And uh, share your comments down below if you got a good fishing story. I'd love to hear it. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're staying safe. And away from the damn COVID-19, self-isolating, get out and enjoy the great outdoors, go fishing, go for a hike, catch yourself some dinner, or if you're into catch and release, and let them all go, and I'll catch them and let them go too. How about that? But it is chronomid season, and we're going to leave it at that. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy it.